from Down Under Dynamics here with another video for you. So today's video is going to be about back flying. So I'm going over a couple of things of how I control back flying, how I go up, down, forward, back, turns, um, and just some of the techniques and thought patterns behind why they work and what's inefficient and efficient. So let's crack on up, see how we go. So we can see here in the video uh, a couple of things. So things we want to note is the aerodynamics of the body. So the lowest point is the hip, hip here, the shoulders and the head. Okay, so we're creating a straight line with these. Okay, um, the next is the arms. The arms you'll notice are actually in front of the head. The head is not, uh, they're not behind the, the head. And you can see the hands are quite relaxed when flying. Okay, they're not pushing off the wind or anything like this. They're just being blown, okay? So the weight of the arm is sitting on the wind rather than us trying to push on the wind, okay? So it's all about surface area. So the more surface area you have, the slower you can afford, the less surface area you have, the faster you can afford. Okay, so um, we can see here with the arms, if we pushed on the hands, a lot of people will fall on the back and they'll try to push off the hand, okay? And that will cause a shape similar to this, okay? So you can see in the picture on the left, it, it, it works, but there it gets that little slight bit of turbulence coming off the, the top end of the hand, okay? So what we want to think about is our arms as gears. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. You never want to go from first to, to fifth gear because this is the first point of contact. The wind's going to come up and it's going to spill off the arm like this, okay? So we want to apply that. With, we're using this first, then we're widening this second, third, fourth, fifth, okay? If it's just relaxed, you can see our arms are nice and still. And if we want to go slower, we're slowly just exposing more of that surface area, okay? You'll notice in the back, the back's not rounded. It's kind of flat and it's not really arched. The shoulders aren't up like this side. I'm flying with my shoulders down, okay? So you can see on the side of the body, they're down, not up, down like this. You don't want to push too much, otherwise the head is going to come forward as well. So we want to make sure that head and that back is uh, straight, so the fuselage is the most important thing when we're flying. Once we can kind of control that main area, the, everything else, the extremities are controlling up and down, vice versa, things like this. So you'll notice with the legs, okay, so my my thighs are a little bit exposed, and my lower half of my legs are a little bit down, so that these lower half of the legs, they can also be straight, okay? Just like that. So the wind's hitting the thigh and it's spilling off the lower half and it has a clean, nice clean direction to flow from. If we start lift pulling it down like this, okay, so it's not really um, straight horizontal, the wind does come up, hit this direction and spill inwards as well. This isn't to say that that's the wrong way of flying, okay, this is just what happens when we do this. Most of the time, pretty much all the time, people are going to have their legs a little bit lower than their knees just because we're searching for that 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 feeling we're not looking at the legs so we're searching for that feeling of that uh is the wind there where's it hitting so we kind of push past a little bit so essentially if i wanted to go up i'm gonna to have to lift these up to this area okay so it's creating a straight line and presenting more surface here it's going to cause me to go up or which you'll see in a sec i straight my legs now the key here the reason i say the legs want to be in this kind of angle here is because then we have the shins the torso along with the head all matching okay so we're having these all, all these pitches and angles in our body we're having along the same plane okay when we go uh, slower you'll see I just try to straighten out and match that one thing before I do go slower you'll notice when I play this footage the body's going to kind of wobble a little bit a lot of this wobble comes from around the legs it's from that response that I was talking about before us as humans we need some sort of response because the air is going past we send to kind of keep touching and searching for it and that's what kind of wobbles the body. The other thing that wobbles the body is burbles going through the tunnel as well. That also wobbles the body. Different tunnels have different aer aerodynamic properties and some are smoother than others. Okay, it's the same reason why people will try to push on the back of the hands. Okay, so let's see what we're talking about. So you can see they're slightly pushing on the wind that's causing that wobble. Okay, if I stop moving, the body's going to stop moving. If I keep searching for the response, it's going to search for it as well. So you'll see here, I'm going to, in a sec, I'm going to go slower. Now I've just matched the torso. Now I've brought the thighs down into the line and now the shins are a little bit more in line compared to the torso. Notice my head doesn't really move, my shoulders stay here, my posture stays neutral. Don't go forward, don't go back, just neutral. With the arms, same thing, they're still not pushing too far back. Do a little test now, have your arms 
push them back behind your head until the point where you feel your head actually start coming forward. It's impossible for you to have the arms back and your head properly back in line with the body. It's, there's a lot of tension there, so to have less tension, just bring them back as far until you feel where the head wants to come forward, back off, and that's your slow fall position. Okay, so you'll see they are definitely in front of my head. Okay, I should be able to see them. If we look at this from another angle, uh, we'll keep watching this one in a sec. So the reason I wobbled there is because I probably pushed the, the feet too far under the under the bum, okay? So I caused a bit more of a shape similar to, to this. It kind of wanted me to start doing a layout, so I backed off. I'm gonna go over layouts in a later video. You see this next one, I kind of have my, my whole body. It's a little more bent to the hips, but still I'm using the shins, the torso, and the arms, okay? In this footage, you'll see the, the I'm also using the side of my shoe as well. Okay, so let's look at another bit of footage for this one now. This one here, okay. So I'm coming down. Oh, doing forwards backwards a bit too far. Okay, so up, there you go, you can see just there how I not only straighten the legs, but I've also rolled the feet out slightly as well. And I've caught all that extra wind, boom, on that underside of the foot here and on the shins, which you can't even see because of the, the bodies in the way. You can see my legs. They're apart, okay, they not don't have to be together. I'm not trying to hold as much tension in the body, just widening the position on many, many levels. They come up, come down, oh, same thing to stop. You can see I'm pulling, I'm pushing this part of my, my leg out like that, which is exposing all the side of my leg, just as much as the back of the leg. You can see that over here too, all on the side, okay? So you're moving your feet outwards as well as straight coming down it's opposite bring those feet so they're straighter i'm bringing these knees in a bit closer and i've also lost that lift or that drag from the side of my leg just here my arms you can see my arms also aren't to the side anymore they're more up and down Okay, so it's just surface area, that's all it is. Come down so it's a bit wider to stop. All right, let's have another look at another angle. We're gonna go for, I think this is more forwards and backwards now we're gonna be looking at. Okay, so we'll just come down. Now you can see, you can go forwards and backwards with your arms and your legs. Now there's a couple of things for going forwards and backwards. If you move your arms down to the side here, okay, it's gonna cause you to go forwards. But at the moment, this surface area on the front of the arm is exposed. So if you move, if you move your arms in a motion like this, okay, you're going to drop because you're going to present less surface area. Whereas if we have a body like this, okay, we have the arms here in this surface area at the moment. We want to keep our arms and move them all the way along this line here. Okay, we don't want to move them from this direction to this direction. We need to move them all the way out wide. So that way we're always keeping this same amount of surface area exposed. Okay, so therefore my wrist would go from this part and it would end in this part and I would travel directly across this line. If I move them and I move my arms down to this part so my wrists come in more, so I essentially expose more surface area of my arms, I'm going to go up. Vice versa, if I move them backwards and I move them here, so less surface area exposed, I'm going to now go down, okay? The other thing you can see when we do this is the legs. Okay, if I straighten my legs in this direction, I'm going to go forwards. If I bend my legs into a position where my knees become more here, so I lose the surface area of the back of the leg, and this part, I don't bend down, I allow them to stay on this same angle, which is the same angle as my torso, 
and they travel up. So essentially my position is going to look more something like this. If need be, I can then slightly bring them down to match, but I don't want this section of the leg, this section, to go vertical. If I go vertical, I'll start transitioning or I'm going to start dropping. Okay, so let's see if all I talked about was correct. Okay, so I move them, same area, forwards and back. Okay, there's a little bit more pressure. You can see the legs as well. Straightening the legs, straightening the arms. Okay. Now my, my, top, my arms also, as I said before, they're not pushing behind my head. I'm keeping them in front of the head. Okay, if I push them too far behind, my head's gonna come forward. So you'll see my head is in line with the torso. This here is in line with the same as the torso. And now I've taken this way. So I'm more in a seated position in this position here, okay? Rather than the back fly position. They all link together, which will go on in further videos down the track. Okay, and to stop, just straightening the legs there. At the end, just to stop and return to neutral. Sweet, I think the next one is side slides. So this is a bit interesting. We'll go to uh, the front video. It's a bit, bit more uh, revealing, I guess, from my pants. But what we're gonna see is more so the arms and the legs is what we wanna notice of how we're pushing off. Now there's many ways to do this. You can, you can push on the air, you can straighten your body to allow slippage um, so the wind pushes you in that direction rather than you trying to force yourself while you're pushing off the wind. Um, you can put, use one side or both sides. Generally what I do is I use my outside, the arms. When I, if I want to go this direction, I'm going to use this half of my body. If I want to go this direction, I'm going to straighten this half. So essentially I'm trying to think about pushing off the wall that I want to go away from. Okay, some of these can sound quite confusing. Let's see what I do. Okay, so you can see here, I have started to push this side of the leg this direction, and I've also done my arm. So my arm, if my arm was placed like this before, I would have allowed it to slip out slightly. And this other leg, I am steering it slightly. Some of these I don't do on heading either. Hey? So you can see there, I've probably pushed a little bit too much with the arms. Okay, you can see how much of that's exposed. Okay, so the wind at the back, when you can see the arm, it's gonna be coming off, it's gonna be slipping this way. And the leg, it's gonna be hitting the side of my thigh, okay? Probably because I've put too much arm out and the speed's quite low, it started rotating the top half of my body quicker than the lower half. You can see there how it started rotating around. I've steered it back around by using my feet like paddles or like uh, paddle fins, whatever you wanna call them. Rudders. There you go, same thing. So I'm thinking of pushing off this wall here with this leg and this hand. Note I'm not pushing down, note the aerodynamic shape of it. Okay, I tried to bend here. I thought I'll show another technique. I kind of cooked it because that's not how I fly. So your kook it, just embrace the kook. Don't um don't try to fight it. Have an experimentation mindset rather than expectation mindset. That's what a lot of what I'm doing here and why I wanted to do this tutorial rather than showing all the bad things and the right things. Just showing what I do because I just experiment, yeah. Try everything once, see how it goes. Okay, so turning. So this one we're gonna be talking about turning. You can see here the first thing I do when I'm turning, I'm turning with my legs and my feet. Okay, so what I do, I do a couple things. First thing, feet up and down. Okay, I turn these, I turn my heels, yeah, in the direction that's going to turn my body. So it's hard to think. So don't think about when you're going to do this, don't think I need to turn my heels in left or right. Just turn your heels in the same direction to see what happens. I go, wow, that turns me left. Cool, well, that's how you go left. Do it the other way. Wow, that I turned right. That's how you turn right, okay? The big thing that people will start doing is pushing, pulling, and contorting their body. So all I am doing essentially is look at my heels, And now what's happened is the wind is coming and it's hitting and spilling up this part of the shin, okay? And it's spilling up this outside part of the shin. 
and that's what rotates me. Okay, so if I'm on my back here, all right, it's my head, and I turn, at the moment I'm gonna be rotating around that. Because I'm turning with my legs and my feet, I'm gonna be rotating around my head. If I turn using my arms, okay, I'm gonna be rotating around my feet. If I turn with my arms and my legs, I'm gonna rotate around the center. Front wheel, rear and rear wheel, front and rear wheel drive. Well, you can see I can stop with the arms as well, so you can also do this with the arms. I've counted a little bit to stop myself with the outside of the arm. I haven't pushed on the wind, I've just exposed that. You can see there's a the clear line all the way down. The shape of the arm does not go like this. Okay, I'm not pushing on the wind, okay? That way my arm can stay relaxed. This other arm is still just very relaxed. Boom, it does nothing, yeah? Just chill, doesn't have to do anything. Oh, there you can see, shake all those legs. Cool, we've got to stop. So it doesn't have to be much, it's just small. You don't have any push, you don't have any force, you don't have to do anything, just the wind's coming anyway, it's coming really, really quick. So just change the profile of your legs or your body or your arms and you will turn. Experiment with this first because um, you'll have a coach there, I'm sure, if you're doing this and haven't done it. And if you have done it already, then and finally back, then go in and just experiment. What does this do? What does this do? See what happens. Cool. So, we haven't got much more left of this tutorial. A couple more turns. Main thing you want to see, like you can see now, I've on this last one, I've started putting a little bit more input in with the legs and it's turned me a bit quicker. Here, okay, so you can see I have now turned a little bit more, but all I'm doing is I'm exposing more of the, the surface area of my leg rather than slightly, just more. If you do this and you widen your legs, you're probably going to spin and go up. If you do it in narrow your legs, you're probably going to spin and stay down. Okay, same with your arms, keeping that chest nice and open. Okay, so not dropping the chest. A lot of people will turn, they'll lower the chest. Doing a couple more up and down. Let's quick switch to the side view again and see what this has. So these are the last ones. Okay, you can see here I over exaggerate the uh, the legs of turning the feet to the outside. It's a little bit more wider position. The shins are a little bit more a little bit better, so they're not as as wide. A couple more turns. Sweet, so as usual, a bit rusty in the end there. Um, the next video is going to be about sit flying. Uh, I will show the normal sit fly position and the stag position, as they call it. Uh, we'll cover everything forwards, backwards, turns, up, down, um, different ranges and stuff like that as well. And then we have head down on after that again, and then a bunch of dynamic stuff as well. So just the general dynamic positions, ranges, so out face, in face, head, um, head up and head down, and then we're going to go into lines and front layouts, back layouts, and putting things together like that. So stay tuned for more guys. Um, hope you like it. If you have any comments or questions, as I said before, leave them in the inbox or the, the comment section. That's why they have it. And um, yeah, check out if you want your own videos debriefed, go visit denundynamics.com. We've got a bunch of merch and stuff there as well. So if you want to support the channel and I uh, can help bring, keep bringing you more educational videos. So thank you. Cheers.